get out of your way here. Okay, you can see uh, there's a, uh, a fire that's uh, started in the wastebasket area behind the chair. And the smoke alarm is uh, going off, and that's taking uh, less than uh, 30 seconds. Nine seconds. Okay, we've got nine seconds back here from Mark Brady. And you, you see the fire is extended to the curtains and uh, to the chair. Now, this is a, a very sparsely uh, furnished room we have here. Uh, it's got sheetrock on the walls, and you, which is a typical what you'd find in a home. But you can see how fast the uh, fire is burning. And uh, i got a clock here now. We're at about 40 seconds, and you can see the smoke uh, level in the room has come down significantly as well. Now, uh, we'll, we're going to uh, take a look at the uh, sprinkler situation here in just a minute, but the, uh, the fact is you're not going to have a whole lot of time to evacuate, particularly if you're in a dead sleep. Uh, let's say uh, maybe you've been injured, uh, can't get out of bed quite so quick or you have small children in another part of the house. All those uh, things you think about, uh, you'd have to think about in your own situation and you do that by having an escape plan that you plan ahead of time. Now you notice the smoke is banked down. At some point uh, the, the room would reach flashover where essentially everything in the room uh, will burst into flame. Now again, this particular room is uh, a little bit sparsely furnished, so you, we may not quite meet that point, but you can see that the plastic on the, on the front there is uh, beginning to melt and drop away. Okay, okay guys. Okay, that, uh, our total time on the clock right now is about a minute and 53 seconds. It just passed two minutes. So you can see how quickly uh, that fire was uh, progressing. And yeah, the smoke alarm, uh, it's, a, it's something that's important and it alerted us at the nine second point according to Mark Brady. And uh, with that, you had an alert, but if there was nothing there to do anything about the fire, uh, these firefighters were already here on site. Remember, this took two minutes to occur. Think of a house with an open floor plan, how quickly a fire could progress through the entire structure. <laughs> okay, the firefighters have arrived now and they've knocked the fire down, but Again, that was a two minute time period. Had we had to alert them, they drive to the scene here, you're probably looking at at least six minutes. I doubt very seriously that there would be much left of our structure here. And certainly anybody inside the structure uh, was, would be subject to peril. All right, uh, are we ready to start the, the second demonstration? Now the other cube that we have here is again 8x8. Eight eight. It's, it's been constructed identical to the room you just saw. Uh, the fire is going to start in a very similar manner. In, in the wastebasket with the curtains, again, they've been, um, the rooms have been furnished as identical as possible. The difference in this room is that it is equipped with an automatic fire sprinkler, a residential fire sprinkler, which is typically going to activate at about 150 degrees. Now, it's very important to point out that typically only the, the one sprinkler head that's over the fire is going to be the one to activate. Occasionally, uh, depending on how, far the, how fast the fire rolls across the ceiling or if there's something that may be blocking the heat, then you may have a second sprinkler head activate, but that's uh, not too frequently. Fire go, Bill. Okay, we got the fire fire going now. We're up to uh, 17, 18 seconds. Sounds like our smoke alarm's going off, although it's a little bit hard to hear. Mark, do you have the time on the smoke alarm activation? There's about eight seconds on the smoke alarm. And we got 34 seconds on the sprinkler head uh, activation. 
So you can see it's a huge, huge difference. If somebody's in that structure, it certainly 